This is Mike Lively, and I'm at Daymar, and I have uh, Zach with me. Say hi, Zach. Hi. And say hey, Matt. Hey. And what I found out today is that both Zach and Matt are like the smartest students at Daymar College, and I've decided to triple the class work. What do you think about that? Oh, they're all four. They're ready to go. I want to work day and night on Flash to become really good at it. Now, real quick here, I just want to uh, – we're going to build a simple website. This is actually Chapter 3 today, and uh, we've actually already covered a lot of material. So we're going to actually start building websites today. And the first thing we're going to do is just bring up Flash. So you should bring up Flash and hit ActionScript 3. And up comes your ActionScript 3 course. I'm going to go ahead and – your ActionScript 3 site. I'm going to go ahead and just save this. So give it a name, My First Site. And it's saved. Now, the first thing I want to want to do is go ahead and build a, get a background for this site. And so let's go ahead and just take a look at some backgrounds. And I'm going to rename this layer right here so I know this is going to be my background. Now, once I put my background in there, what, I'm going to, what am I going to want to do? Save it. Once I put it in here, I'm going to want to lock that background down so I don't move it around, okay? Because everything is going to go on top of that background. So I'll just call this background. Okay, so I haven't put it in there yet, so I'd like to import that background. I have a folder full of iStock photos. For your practice, you can actually go to the web and download something or make sure that if you're going to use it for professional uh, licensing purposes or for professional uh, websites, you want to make sure you have copyrights, right? So in this particular case, I am using iStock. I do have copyrights, and so let's go ahead and bring that iStock folder in. But can we do that? Well, what do we need to ask first? What's the most important thing here? What's the most important thing before I even start building my site? What do I need to know? Are they copyrighted? Well, that's important, but what do I need to know when I decide I'm going to build a site? What size it's going to be, right? Pixels, right? Is this an 800 by 600? Is this a 400 by 300? I mean, I'm going to bring an image in. What size? So let's go to uh, iStock and see what we have there real quick. Let me bring my iStock folder over here. Why well, is it a messed up desktop? Don't do as I do, but do as I say. Don't let your desktop get this messy. Don't do as you do. do as you say. Ah, do as I say, not as I do. There you go. Okay, so I'm coming along here, and I got a nice little image down here, and this is like a C image. Very beautiful image. Let's bring that up. That's extremely lovely. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that up in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and right-click on that and bring that up in Photoshop. Open with Photoshop. Now, I'm not really sure how big this image is yet, so I want to go to uh, Image and just see what the size is. So we'll go Image Size. And we see the size is 3,000 pixels by uh, almost 1,500 pixels. That's too big, right? Yeah. Now, what, what size do you want to make this? Well, I'm actually going to scale to proportions just for this particular demo, but you may have to actually crop and get it right into the size of your vendor. So at least let's bring the width down to 1,000. So I brought the width down to 1,000, and that's 1,000 by 476 if you saw the, uh, the height that come in there. So that's a little bit smaller. Of course, that's because it's demagnified. So if I put 100% there... Uh, not a thousand, a hundred. Then I can see the full image, how, how big it's going to be. Now, at this point, what I want to do, I actually want to export this for uh, the web. And let's come along here and go File, X Save or Export for the Web. And so I have two options when I decide to export it. I can export it as a JPEG or I can export it as a ping. Which one do you think I want to choose in this particular instance? JPEG. Absolutely, because the ping what, is fatter. And it supports transparency, so you have the extra transparencies channel. So if you have a website that has lots of pings, that actually that transparency channel is going to slow you down a little bit. And so you want to be careful about how many transparencies you use. I mean, you're going to need transparencies, no doubt. A lot of people use them. Specifically, if you're using doing 3D work, transparency really lugs your site. The extra alpha channel in a 3D environment really lugs the amount of calculations that need to be done. So you need to be very careful about that. So uh, I'm going to say this as a JPEG. Now, how do I know how big this is going to be? So if you look down at the bottom of the screen right here in Photoshop, let me bring it up so you can see it. I'll bring it down so you can see it. You actually can see the size of the actual image right here. So right now, if I save it as a ping, then it's going to be 554K, which is almost half a meg. I don't want something that big. Okay, so that's bad. So let's see what, what the JPEG is going to give us. So I'm going to come up here and switch it to a JPEG. Go to JPEG, and let's come down and see what size that's going to be. So, whoa, look at that. If I save it as a JPEG, I've compressed it down to what? 20K. Wow, what a compression. From 500, you know, half a, half a meg to 20K, that's fantastic. It says it's going to, if you're on a modem, it's going to take five seconds to load. 
See that right there? But if you're not on a modem, it's gonna it's just gonna zip right up. So that's exactly what you don't want to do. Matter of fact, this event is so small. I might even embed it in the Flash Player, so it comes right up. There's no loading from the outside. Okay, now the way you embed it in the Flash Player is what you stick it in the library, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and just bring this image in and do that. Do that indeed. So I'm gonna come up and bring here. I'm gonna first I have to save this for the web. So I've already got that saved as a web, and I want to go. Uh, 1,000 by 4. Uh, remember, it's 1,000 by 476. Now, one way to remember what sizes your image uh, images are is go ahead and just put that in there. I'm gonna call this my C image, and I'm gonna just put 1,000 by 476. So, if you're working with a lot of different image sets, you actually want to put the size right in right in there so you can remember by just by looking at the name. Okay, so go ahead and save that, and that's gonna save for us. And now I'm ready to get out of Photoshop and import that to the web or import that into Flash. So let's bring Flash up. So I have Flash up right now and I want to import this into Flash and so I have two options. I can import it to the library and then drag it from the library to stage or just import it directly into stage. I got my background layer. Just go ahead and click on that uh, keyframe and let's go to import and let's go ahead and import that right to stage. Now I'm going to import this to stage but I got a problem. Guys, you know what the problem is? My stage is too small. So let's go ahead and just import it and we'll size it, but then we're going to make it invisible and resize, this, resize the stage. So I'm going to go down and find it. And there's a uh, My C image right there. Let's click on that. And we imported that stage and, uh, we can go to and we can move that around. We can go to properties and see where it's at. Let's click on it. And it's at 0, 0. That's where I want it, but it's 1000 by. Uh, 476 and my stage is not that size. So we're going to make this invisible so we can see what's going on behind it. Click on the stage and you see my stage is 550 by 400. That's the wrong size. So let's go ahead and edit that and change its stage size. So it was 1000 by what? 476. Very good. And hit OK. And now I can make that visible, and it sits right on top of it. Hoo -hoo. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, control enter here, and I've got a few things to say. Now here's my actual image, and it's not uh, a standard size, you know, like 800 by 600, and I'm just going to go with it for here, but you'd actually want to do some cropping and get this, you know, a standard uh, uh, HD size or whatever your website would be. But uh, if you shrunk this, you could actually make a nice little banner out of it. But one thing I want to make here is that many times you can go to iStock or, and get a beautiful image like this, and you can actually turn this into a 3D game. And you're probably wondering, how in the heck could I turn that into a 3D game, right? I mean, it's just a 2D image, right? Well, we know Flash is now 3D, so it gives us the ability to put 3D stuff inside of 2D stuff. So what I would do to turn this into a 3D game is this. Let me go ahead and show you. I'd actually take this image right here, and let's pan around so you can see this flat part right here. And I'd actually, I'm going to lock this so we don't get in its way. I'm going to add another layer. Okay, let's add another layer to it. And I'll make this a 3D plane. And we're just doing this for illustration purposes. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along here and I'm just going to draw a plane. Let's make this a red. Let's make this a red. Uh -huh. There you go. Sorry about that. And let's go ahead and draw our plane. There we go. And now I have a plane. I'm going to turn that into a movie clip. So let me double click on that. What key do I hit? F8. F8, absolutely. I'm going to turn that into, uh, uh, we'll call it seating plane, okay? You'll find it in a moment why. And now what I'm going to do, let me open this up so you can see what I'm doing. All right. Good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this around. And in order to turn this into a 3D uh, game, and I'm going to stretch this out a little bit, I'm actually going to rotate this into the plane of the image. Now I'm going to put a little bit of alpha on here so we can see through it. Okay. And so let's go to Properties. And in Properties, we can go on down to uh, Style. And in Style, we can go to Alpha. And Alpha, we can actually bring this down a little bit. There we go. Now I can see what's going on behind that. You see that? And so what I would do to make this 3D is I'm going to come along and take this little tool right here. And I'm going to rotate this flat. There you go. Right in the water. Isn't that cool? And I'm going to do this programmatically. I'm actually doing this now with my drawing tools. But I actually do this with a program that I would write. And so I would turn this plane such that it's actually flat on this river. Now, this image behind it, the background, is not 3D, right? 
but my plane is 3D. And so even though my plane is 3D, the image is not, so keep that in mind. I'm just rotating it into place right there. See how it's 3D? Okay, now, now what I would do, if I wanted boats to float around on my river, I'd put boats on this 3D plane, and I'd float them around on this 3D plane. And now, voila, I've changed a 2D image into a 3D game. And that's what a lot of people do on Facebook. You've seen Facebook games before? They'll take a beautiful image like this, they'll take a 3D plane, and they'll make it invisible and, and, and rotate it over, and they'll make sure that uh, their objects stick on that plane so it looks like things are rolling around. As they move back, they get smaller, and move forward, they get larger. So you're, you've actually turned a 2D image into a 3D game. And so that's what some of these beautiful images are for. We could turn this into a 3D game. We won't do it today, but I can show you some of those techniques as we move on in this course. Let's go ahead and just get rid of this.